Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Matt Taylor here with my good buddy. Kyle Amundsen. And this is our first episode of Progressive Preppers. So bear with us. <laughs> so what is kind of the idea behind Progressive Preppers, Kyle? Uh, well, um, preparedness used to be kind of the, uh, the realm of the, uh, uh, the more conservative or, you know, at least uh, libertarian uh, folk. Um, and now uh, a lot of progressives are kind of getting on board. Um, there's a lot of lists out there from government agencies and stuff, uh, um, you know, like things that you should have, like th- like a like in supply in case of uh, certain emergencies, weather emergencies, power outages. Yeah, especially uh, in this like area, that. you know. I've yeah. been talking a lot about, like, what happens if the power goes out? <laughs> yeah, you know, a power it's outage in the below. upper Midwest, uh, you know, oof, is, you know, it's, de- you know, it's deadly. It's, it's deadly, deadly in Texas. Yeah, it's deadly um, in Texas. Exactly. So, I mean, up here in Minnesota... Uh, one should be, pre- it behooves us to be uh, a little more prepared. And I think it's definitely becoming a little more mainstream to have some kind of uh, preparedness in mind. I was listening to NPR the other day, and they were talking about, uh, you know, your go bag. And I was like, did they just say go bag on NPR? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Well, and this is not something like, it's not new. Um, a lot of the stuff that we that we talk about and a lot of the stuff that we kind of advocate um, is just, W- w- would just be considered common sense, like in our j- in just our parents' era, right? Um, so it's just something that people seem to have really gotten away from, um, you know, in the uh, you know in the very uh, very near uh, near you know in the, the in recent memory, right? Um, you know, like our our grandparents and stuff, people that lived through the depression, uh, all of this stuff would be you know if they had access to the things we do, they would probably think that it was silly right. to not. You right. know, uh, uh, observe some uh, um, some measures. Yeah. So today we're talking about a get home bag, and this is by no means a comprehensive list of what you would need or anyone would need to for a get home bag. But this is the get home bag that I am personally preparing for uh, for myself. Uh, I am going to be taking a journey across the country, and uh, I recently both of us have read a book um, called um, um, the Borrowed World series, which is a really good book, really good series. And in that, uh, the main character ends up finding himself a couple hundred miles away from home, and he's got to figure out a way to get there. Um, and he's and, he, and he, they have to walk, and it's a it's a really interesting story. But he is a prepared minded guy, and he has a uh, a get home bag put together. And I figured, well, since we wanted to start this show, and I was taking a trip across the country, it was probably a good time to put together a get home bag. And it was a lot more challenging than I thought it would be. I was like, hey, I've read all these books. I got all this stuff. I should be in good shape. And uh, it's been a challenge. Uh, you know, and uh, we're not, uh, <laughs> I mean, they don't, uh, they don't give out PhDs on this sort of thing. Um, and we don't, uh, like, we read, uh, you know, we read a lot of books, uh, watch some YouTube videos and stuff like that. Um, Neither of us have ever survived a major calamity like an EMP or something like that, obviously. Right. Um, uh, but that's, uh, you know, neither have the other people putting out, uh, you know, videos <laughs> right. and stuff. Right. And, uh, yeah, um, unless you live in, like, uh, Syria or Iraq <laughs> yeah. or some of that. that usually the stuff isn't coming into play all that often. But Yeah, not a lot of first know- first-hand knowledge, uh, you know, out there uh, when, pe- when people are making these videos and stuff. Um, but we... Uh, uh, you know, we, we, we glean what we can from uh, from different sources and, uh, you know, try to put together what makes sense. And Matt's so, done a fantastic job. So this is, this is what, I, what I put together. So first of all, we're talking about a, a, a get-home bag. So this is not, like, everything that you possibly could need in any scenario. This is just the, the stuff that you have in the one backpack that you're planning on keeping with you pretty much the entire time you're out there on your journey. Right. Yeah, this so, is not your full tactical loadout or something. In fact, you kind of want to uh, do the gray man thing and, you know, not right. stand out. So <laughs> that's a very good point, right? The whole, and if you don't know what Kyle's talking about, the, the, the idea of the gray man is uh, to basically um, be somebody who doesn't have a lot of attention drawn to themselves. So, it's, so, so I'm not... Yeah, just blend in and not I'm make not yourself a target. I'm not walking around um, in, a, in a plate carrier with a, with a big tactical yeah. backpack on my back. Um, so the backpack that I'm using is uh, just a North Face uh, regular old backpack. Actually, it was a gift from uh, the Takedown Gym uh, for Christmas. Um, I don't celebrate Christmas. So I'm not returning it. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's just a normal backpack. It's, there's nothing special about it. Um, it uh, it's a nice hearty backpack, but um, it does have the... Uh, does have this um, handy dandy strap that goes across so if I do have to uh, 
do some major hiking, um, whatever. And I'm just hoping I can cram all of this stuff inside <laughs> of it. That's going to be the real challenge. So, so I'm going to throw that down there. We'll make it fit. The, uh, the, the first thing that was on everybody's list was, uh, <laughs> oddly enough, was socks. Because uh, inevitably, if you're in an emergency situation, you're probably going to spend a lot of time walking. Um, a minimum of three pairs of good socks. Um, these are Timberland, um, you know, they're uh, merino wool blend. Um, good socks, nothing majorly expensive. Um, but I found my, uh, I found the only three pair that didn't have holes in them. And uh, <laughs> they're going in the pack. Um, and then uh, I just have uh, a, uh, I try, I put these little bands around it, try to make it as small as I possibly can. Um, but this is just a nice pair of long underwear, and this is a uh, compression shirt, like, uh, uh, it's basically like a rash guard. Um, but that'll help me keep the heat in if I end up having to, uh, to uh, make my travel across the mountains, which is a pretty scary scenario. But also, also moisture wicking. Yes, yep. Both of them are moisture wicking, and that's super important. Um, and then I just got a comfortable pair of jeans, nothing special there. And then I figured since uh, I was probably going to get some, uh, I may as, well, may as well do some advertising for spitballing on my uh, <laughs> journey home. So I, uh, I, got a, I got a T-shirt and just a light sweatshirt. And that's basically all that I have in there for clothing. Now, again, this is not the stuff that I'm using on my everyday wear. This is the stuff that's staying in my pack in, in case I have to, have to make the escape right um and again who knows what that what that might be i mean maybe it's just as simple as as uh we get a flat tire going through the mountains and uh you know we, it's 10 miles to the nearest gas station we have no cell service and i gotta i gotta make that journey well i'm prepared for that journey um if the EMP hits and uh we no longer have electricity um i'm probably a little less prepared but I still have some preparation, and a little preparation is better than no preparation. Um, where do you want to go next? Are we talk about food? Yes. Okay, so I, I, this was tough. It was really tough to try to decide how much food you wanted to bring, and, the, w and everything I looked at, there, people were all over the place. Um, so I tried to get as calorie-dense food as I possibly could and not take up a whole bunch of room. So what I ended up getting was these um, Met RX bars. Um, they are a, uh, they're basically just a really uh, untasty, um, apparently, uh, protein bar. They have uh, uh, 30 grams of protein. What do they have for calories? Oh yeah, I have the sheet right here. Uh, they are uh, 380 calories per bar. So that's a decent amount yeah. per bar. Um, and and, I'm, and they're a well-established company. They made uh, they've been making sports supplements for thirty years or they, whatever. They uh, they had they had some pretty good reviews on on Amazon. So um, they were the and they they didn't cost me an arm and a leg. Um, there's a lot of them out there that are that have really good reviews and are really good. I just couldn't honestly afford them, you know, yeah. and because uh, <laughs> that stuff gets really expensive. Well, and that's another thing about the whole preparedness thing. Since a lot of people are catching the bug, you can spend it. A lot, a lot of money. A lot. Um, basically, everything that you're going to see us doing uh, will be on a budget. Obviously, because um, I have very little money. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not, uh, you know, um, we're not, uh, you, you won't see our um, specially designed prepper RV, uh, you Yet. know, lo loaded up with state-of-the-art weaponry. That's and, season uh, two, once we get some sponsors. <laughs> yes. Um and then in the food department, I also, um, running across those, I got these things called uh, survival tabs. Um, somebody in the, uh, in the comments was talking about how they, uh, how they use these things. And, and they're just, uh, they're just uh, basically like little gummies of, uh, of food. And, um, yeah, I don't know that these are all that great. It's 12 tabs um, is, a, is a serving, uh, 240 calories, um, 30 grams of protein. So, you know, again, it's not horrible, um, and uh, they're pretty small and light, so I figured I could jam those guys in there. Can't hurt unless they hurt. And I also like, I like beef sticks. Well established. <laughs> um, yeah, these things last a long time, and uh, they're also really tasty. I had one just right before we started. <laughs> I, I took that out of my other supply. Yes. <laughs> took that out of my other supply. So that's pretty much it. That's all I'm packing for food, except for one other very important thing as far as food goes 
and I think it's probably the most important thing, maybe the most important thing to survive on the table. Matt will eat human at the drop of a hat. <laughs> yeah, it's not the knife. <laughs> it's actually the life straw. If you guys, and that. every single... Every single household should have one of these things, and we are not sponsored by Life Straw yet. But if they want to sponsor us, uh, they definitely should. By all means. Um, so basically, what this thing is is it's uh, it's just got a filter inside of it, um, and you can take literally any any water. It doesn't have to be potable, and you can you can you can make it drinkable. Um, yeah, it's not um, expensive. I would filter water as best I can. Obviously, uh, you know, before you, you know, I mean, but if you had to, you know, you could drink out of a mud puddle with that. Yep, I mean, it, you definitely should filter it uh, as best that you can because if you don't, it'll clog your filter. Is really what happens, and you get a lot less life out of your filter. But you can literally run it through your sock into your life straw, and then use the pump on the life straw or the, the filter on the life straw to, to make it uh, potable. And we'll be doing at least one episode on water purification in yep. the not-so-distant future. For sure. Um, but everybody should have a life straw because you just never know when, uh, let's just say, well, I remember when I was a kid, how many times did Brainerd get a, uh, a, a water alert and you couldn't drink the water? Uh, you know, that happened all the time. It seems like it's happening less these days. Um, but there's all sorts of reasons why why the water out of your tap may no longer be drinkable. Um, and, and this is uh, the cure to that. And the last thing that you want to do when you're trying to make your way back home Ooh, is to get yeah. yourself uh, uh, sick from drinking bad water. Um, it's uh, explosive diarrhea uh, for two or three weeks, and without antibiotics, you will more than likely die. So it's cheap. <laughs> I don't even know how much <laughs> it was. 35 bucks, something like that, is, is definitely cheap. And... It's not like I, it's, this thing lasts forever until I start using it. You know what I mean? Um, I also have an extra filter in there. Um, so I think, I can't remember exactly how much it is, but it's, it's enough. Hundreds and hundreds of hun- gallons. Hundreds and hundreds of gallons. It's enough to keep me alive for quite some time. So, so everybody should get one of those. Okay, what, is that, what else is on the, uh, the list? Shelter. Here? Shelter's a good idea. Now, again, I'd love to pack a tent, and I have a really nice tent, um, but man, it ain't going to fit in that backpack. And if it does fit in that backpack, I'm going to have to leave out some food. So shelter, you kind of got to improvise. I'm bringing along a small tarp. It's just, uh, I don't know exactly what size it is, but just a, it's just a small ground tarp, real thin. It slides in the backpack easy. And, uh, and that'll keep me at least a little dry off the ground. In case you have to, yeah, build, if, if you have to build a shelter, you can sleep on top of it, use it to patch a hole in something, yep. tarps are a must. And then, of course, you just need some garbage bags, some Ziploc bags, and uh, you, know, just, you can make yourself a rain poncho out of this if you need to. You can, you can uh, use it kind of as a sleeping bag, augmenting your, your blanket, um, and uh, um, you, you can like live inside of it if you gotta you know uh but remember children don't put it over your head and breathe because you'll perish yeah uh then what else oh i i I grabbed a bunch of these uh um just uh what are they called hand warmers warmers and feet warmers i'm traveling through the mountains and uh i i really i really dislike being cold (laughs) um and uh yeah, these hand and feet warmers can come in really handy. Um, yeah, they last uh, five hours, or eight hours on, on the hand warmers. Um, and uh, they're pretty light, pretty easy thing to just kind of stick in there just in case they last a long time. So, yep, throw those guys in there. Uh, so we are, in the, uh, we are in the COVID days, so it's a good idea to carry along some masks. I actually got some of these K95 masks, KN95, I guess they are. So these are supposedly just a, a slight bit, not as good as the N95s, um, but uh, are pretty close and they're really reasonably priced. Um, if you can get them, and I, we ordered these on Amazon, so they're not, they, it wasn't, it, they weren't extreme. Um, but these are really good masks. And there's a lot of reasons, not just COVID, that you might need a mask. Yeah. Um, for a survival situation, um, like uh, smoke, uh, <laughs> chemical. I mean, there's. I mean, and and all the. You know, not all these things uh, are going to be like. Compl- all, not all polluted pollutants are going to be completely filtered out by these masks and stuff. But you know, short of carrying around a uh, a gas mask or something, I mean, you want something to mitigate. You know, I. I it, it, 
better a little bit of prevention, you know, I mean, a little right. bit of mitigation. Yeah, uh, like forest fires is a big thing. Uh, going to California, yeah. and uh, I don't know if you know this, but California starts <laughs> on fire all the time, um, and uh, having, a, having a, a decent mask is a good idea. Um, I brought a bunch of them just because, you know, you never know how, how many you're going to need. What is, what's the Dust, saying? smoke, whatever. Uh, two, two is one and oh. one is none. Yeah. Yeah, so as many as you can get. Though it's again, when you're really con when you're trying to consolidate yeah, your when you're stuff down to light. one backpack, it's y you know y yeah, it's nice to have repetition, but you have to you have to always be considerate of the yeah, space. Yeah, sometimes you kind of have to suspend uh, or pay less heed to the like rule of redundancy. Uh, yes. and uh, you know, not just travel light on the most on on some of the most important things. I doubled up, but for the most part, not. Um, and then just in that same line, as far as the masks go, I just I just have a little baggie full of rubber gloves because, um, you know, they're important uh, for all sorts of reasons. Uh, as I was putting this together, I was like, man, I hope I don't get pulled over and searched because they're definitely going to think that I'm, uh, that I'm <laughs> getting rid killer. of a body. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for I sure. Watch Dexter a lot. <laughs> I have never watched Dexter. Um, Your blanket. My bl yeah, so I have a, uh, just a, a packable, um, packable blanket. Um, I, I have a couple straps on there to get it as small as possible. Um, it's not a lot, you know, it's not going to be great. Uh, I don't even know if I'm going to make it if it's, uh, you know, 20 below out there, but, uh, I'm also bringing along a, you know, thermal sleeping bag and all the other stuff, but this is better than nothing if I'm stuck, you know, um, maybe sleeping in a car or whatever it ends up being. So, and then I have, so I have that. And then I also have a survival blanket. Uh, which is just an emergency survival blanket, which has that, um, it's made out of that mylar foil, um, which can, can help you stay alive. You wrap yourself in that, you wrap yourself in the other blanket, you wrap yourself in a, in a, uh, in a tarp and in a couple of, uh, uh, garbage bags. And, uh, I'm giving you 50, 50 chances. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we got that, man, that is going to be tough to stick all that in there. Um, so why don't you, so one of the most important things is give me that roll of duct tape. Indeed, indeed. Um, Duct tape is hugely important. It's, it's so versatile. It's not just red green, man. Um, yeah, uh, super important to have it along. This is kind of a giant roll of duct tape, and I was really considering getting using a smaller roll of duct tape. But then I started kind of thinking in my you mind also about get those little packages, but those are only like 15 feet or whatever. I, w I was started thinking about all the possible scenarios where I might need duct tape, and I was like, man. I'm going for the jumble roll because you can make a shelter out of it. You can uh, it, it just it multiple uses and uh if you are traveling where you're going to be walking a long distance um it, guys i'm telling you shoes are just not made to hold <laughs> up Indeed. the way that uh you would think they would be so um uh in a couple of the books that i was reading um duct tape came into a pretty big play yeah you can get uh, a few more miles out of your hiking boots with, with, with appropriate uh application of duct tape yep and you can just make hiking boots out of duct tape if you need to um so yeah Ode to Red Green. Then also just got some zip ties as well as some uh, some uh, paracable, paracord. Um, love this stuff, and uh, you can never have enough. Um, I had to really control myself to have <laughs> just this 500 foot foot thing of paracable. So we got all that. Um, so. Binoculars, hand me those binoculars. Um, Ooh, I need a small pair. Yeah, so I struggled with, with whether or not I was going to include binoculars and because, you know, they're a little bit, I mean, they're a small pair of binoculars, but it's, it's kind of a big thing to put in there. But then I'm like, you know, it's a huge advantage yes, being yes. able to see far away, especially with my eyeballs because mm -hmm. um, I don't see that far, well far away even. Uh, the way it is, um, so I decided. Yep, they. I, I need to find a find a spot for them in there. Um, what else we got? So um, I have uh, a couple of walkie talkies. Thought a little. I had thought about these a lot too. Um, these are uh, um, 35 mile uh, walkie talkies, um, which is like clear, plain, um, you know, line of sight. Line yeah. of sight. You know, so you know, in the mountains, who knows. In all the books I'm always reading, it's like, what a huge advantage to be able to communicate. Um, so I thought, you know, I better take these with me. So they're fun ones. Well, and then, you know, <laughs> as we know from, uh, you know, from our misspent youths, 
uh, sometimes when you're on the like you're on the run and you're like trying to get away, it's easy to get separated. <laughs> Very yes. So <laughs> if you weren't a delinquent, or if you were a delinquent, you know what we're talking about. Yes, and if you weren't a delinquent. I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah. yeah, you missed out. <laughs> You're already at a disadvantage. Uh, so I brought a couple of flashlights. I got a headlamp, a uh, nice LED headlamp that's pretty bright. And then I got this. Uh, uh, this is like the coolest light. Um, it has like a little magnet on it, and you can stick it up anywhere. It's super bright. And it uh, does a little flashy thing. Um, and, uh, yeah, it thinks pretty cool. Um, I actually have one of these in my uh, Land Rover as like uh, my little uh, my little dome light because <laughs> the dome light doesn't work but it's good i love headlamps i do too i can't get enough headlamps yeah do you, they make headlamps that big um i usually tie them together <laughs> so, so so i'm walking around with a light going like that but it's still cool it's still it's it's very if cool. i'm fast enough i can catch it <laughs> um this is just a uh, a little uh rain poncho real small real nice one um Got to have one of those. So he doesn't have to use his garbage bags? Yeah, I don't want to use up my garbage bags. That's the thing. You know, you get the, the rain poncho also uh, doubles. This is an interesting little thing. So this is... The Silcox key. Is a Silcox key, yeah. So when I gave Kyle my list of stuff, he said, oh, you're missing a Silcox key. And I said, what's a Silcox key again? <laughs> and uh, From watching other preppers youtube videos on their get home bags and stuff um this one i first saw on a uh, an old green berets get home bag um and and then i saw it on a plumber's get home bag and i was like okay you know it's legit uh <laughs> so um commercial buildings uh don't just have regular spigots like uh um you know like 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 you do at home, um, and this uh, these, this will open up uh, um, this will open up your open up your water sources along the uh, along you know commercial buildings and whatnot, um, and uh, yeah, so it's kind of a must have. <laughs> yeah, especially when you're in an area. So uh, we've talked we talk a lot about water, um, and obviously water is super important. Um, but we live in the land of ten thousand lakes, and it's pretty easy to find water around here. But that is not the case everywhere. Yeah, it's not everywhere. And when you're traveling like this. Um, it's always a good idea to have uh, a lot of different options when it comes to water. So and the rule of threes, rule of which is threes. another prepper what concept. Uh, three three minutes oh. without air, three days without water, three weeks without food. Three seconds if I'm choking you. And There's that. Oh, and then another true. thing that you suggested and is a good idea, uh, I thought, is a uh, compass because um, obviously if uh, stuff goes the way that it could go um we're not necessarily gonna have a uh, gps navigation on our phones yeah, right can't count on your phone um can't necessarily count on that so this uh is a uh, a pretty handy little thing and uh, this is a pretty cool one so snap that in there and it's got a little lockdown so that it doesn't get messed up and <laughs> in Encompassing and uh, orienteering um, is something that you can practice. <laughs> practice. You can practice your orienteering, uh, uh, like when you're hiking and stuff. When it's well, for us, that's uh, the three weeks out of the year that it's nice enough to do that sort of thing outside. Um, otherwise, uh, you know. This uh, this summer, I want to do a I want to do a challenge though, where I go and uh, get dropped off at a location that I know the location, and then and then see if I can. Uh, Walk home, you know, maybe start at like a 20 mile and and uh, see what happens. And of course, I'll have my phone and can always call and, uh, for <laughs> a rescue if I yeah. need to. Um, but yeah, I think that would be kind of a, a, an interesting project. We uh, this is this is an interest of ours. Um, we're not super immersed in the like the, the full prepper lifestyle. Um, like uh, you know, like a lot of these guys on these videos, uh, they're pretty advanced preppers. Um, uh, we're uh, uh, this is this is newish to us. Yeah. Um, you know, so bear with us. Uh, if you're just getting into this, then we're probably the one for you, and uh, we'll keep you updated. Uh, you know, because uh, we'll have our growing pains as well. Well, right. even you know, we had to take a we had to, we had to take a short break. Uh, you know, with some uh, with a technical issue, um, but uh, we're uh, um, yeah we're. Uh, we're not experts, and you don't. Uh, I, I I advise like I watch a lot of I, I subscribe to a lot of YouTube channels, and like I said, we um, we we read a lot of books and stuff on this stuff. Um, but yeah, by experts, we're not experts at anything. No, you know. Well, I'm okay at jujitsu. There is that. that. He's a black belt. <laughs> um, so uh, two is none. Uh, one or oh, two, two, two is, is one, one. One is none. none. <laughs> um, 
lighters. Um, I brought oh, two lighters along for sure. just because uh, you definitely need to uh, to be able to start a fire. Um, and I'll I probably see if I can talk him into taking some kind of old school uh, flint uh, technology as well. Well, I am I am pretty sure I can start a fire with a bow uh, and stick. I haven't done it for a really long time, um, but I have successfully done that before. Uh, so uh, I, th I think it can be done, but it's been a while. Um, let's see. Other little things. I just brought along a couple of uh, fork spoons. Sporks. To, you know, spork, spork spoons. Yep, those are nice. Um, some uh, deep woods off. Um, these are... Uh, these are just uh, towelettes. Um, what are they? Uh, they're 25% uh, 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 percent deep. Um, a lot smaller than carrying around a big, a big jug true, of it. True. And uh, man, I'm not really very fond of being bit by mosquitoes, even mm. though I live in this state. Doesn't like the cold. Hates mosquitoes. I don't even know what I'm doing they here. Get you out of here. One of the most <laughs> important things, and I really should have two of them, uh, is a uh, is a sharpie. Um, it comes up all the time in the books I'm reading about how often you need to leave somebody a message somewhere, and uh, having a having a sharpie is super important because you don't want to have to write it in your own blood, so, or your lipstick, <laughs> or your or your lipstick, which I didn't bring any lipstick. Yeah, um, doesn't take up much space. So I also have my um, I have my. Uh, Cold steel Tonto, um, a knife. That thing is I, so cool. This is a very nice <laughs> knife. Any knife is, is important. Having a knife is important. Um, this is a very nice knife. Um, I've had it for a really long time. I got it from my good buddy Tharg back in the day. Um, this knife is pretty famous because you can actually, like, you can shove it through a door. Um, and they, like, it'll, it, it, it's just a very nice knife. It's razor sharp. And, uh, yeah, and it's a, it's a big old tactical Tonto. And solid, uh, what's, what's the, uh, um, forgetting the word tang yeah it's a full tang um the back of it is for you can smash out a window with it um and uh yeah but some kind of uh, of knife i think is super important uh for your for your uh your get home bag and again for redundancy obviously i always carry i always carry my leatherman um which it just never leaves my side has a knife has a pliers has a uh, a bottle opener which you might or might not need <laughs> Uh, and then, obviously, some cash is nice. Um, as much as you can afford to bring. I'm bringing $1,000, which is uh, $776 more than I could afford to bring. Um, but credit card machines going down is a pretty pretty realistic possibility, even if that could be just something as simple as a, as a long power outage, a four-day power outage or something like that, and nobody's taking credit cards that makes things pretty difficult to just operate. Cash is king in a survival situation. So I'm bringing along $1,000 in cash, which is... Uh, as Unless much it's convenient for you to you figure out how much gold and... I, you know, so we talked a little bit about gold, gold and stuff. Precious metals sound good, but man, you know, like... So in, I was thinking about that because we talked a little bit about that, yeah. about whether... About, so it's like, okay, so let's say I did get some gold coins to bring along. Now I'm going to a gas station and I need to fill up my gas. They don't take credit cards anymore. I have to negotiate gold with this uh, with this person that yeah. is uh, standing at the till. Is that a realistic possibility? I think gold would come into key would come into play farther down the further line. Further down the road, indeed. It's not the get home thing. Ho no. ho if we're hopefully I can get home I before the entire collapse happens. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know your uh, you know your average gas station attendant may or may not be well versed in you know using precious metals. Well, I'm not even currency. well versed in it. I don't know how much gold I'm supposed <laughs> no, to give up for I a tank have full of gas. No idea. I'd be like so, and and to make it worse, I played Dungeons and Dragons for years. So, I, you know, I would totally abuse it. You know, I'd be like, yes, six gold coins for that tank of gas? Absolutely. You know. <laughs> <laughs> if you play d and If you're a gamer, you know what yes. I'm talking about. And then everything else that I brought along is pretty much, uh, is pretty much just um, um, first aid stuff. So I have some hand sanitizer wipes, um, which I'm totally addicted to. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I use the, those things crazy. Um, sunblock, um, super important. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, but... I'm a little balding. We're follically challenged I'm, I'm, here. I'm balding. That's the that's the understatement of the century. Um, 
but yeah, especially uh, in the California sun, um, I don't ever use sunblock. Um, I like being sunburned, but there's a difference between being sunburned and having your skin cooked off. Yeah. By, uh, yeah. Yeah. So sunblock's important. Um, I had got this. Um, that Israeli style bandage. Is- Israeli style bandage um, slash tourniquet. Um, super important. Um, I need to read the directions on doing this. I actually did go through a class um, a while ago where we did um, tourniquets and a bunch of other stuff, but I'm going to have to refresh myself on this. Quick, one. like, 45-second tutorial on YouTube. That's what I'm going to do. Quick 45-second on tutorial on YouTube. Um, and I just got, like, a bunch of aspirin, bandages, um, all the regular stuff. But two things in here that I thought were worth pointing out. One of them is moleskin. Huge. Had no idea what it was. <laughs> we just talked about this the other day. So uh, Kyle me- messages me, and he said, oh, one thing you don't you need to get in your, in your first aid kit is moleskin. And I was like, I don't even know where to find a mole. It's like, what are we talking handy. about? Yeah, apparently it is for, like, protecting yourself from blisters or putting on blisters for using yeah. it for. You used to use it in football all the time. You're developing a little blister in your cleats. You know, a, a tiny little chunk of mole skin will save you a lot of discomfort and save that blister from becoming a big festering mess. Yeah, which apparently is super important if you're going to walk a great distance. And then this is my favorite thing in the entire kit is um, this, uh, what is it? Uh, was that step that styptic styptic powder? This is um, quick clog. So if you get a cut, you pour this on it and it and it and it clogs the cut up. This is the canine version, <laughs> which you can get at Pet which Smart. Is always cheaper. Which well you can't get. I can't find it in the human version. They don't they don't sell it at, at uh, stores. But the canine version you can get at Pet Smart. Got to order it. And on I was Amazon. like I was like. Oh, sweet. Helps stop bleeding. It's like, yeah, it's the kind of thing that, like, um, you know, in the army or whatever they would use. If, you know, you know, cover it up and then they pour it on there and compress it. And uh, I was like, sweet. So I got a, I got, I got a thing. There's around. some fantastic lists. Oh, oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot about some of the sites out there. Um, like the like the, the best, the bar none best prepper site that I've ever, that I've ever been on is uh, theprepared.com. And uh, they've got great lists for, like, putting together your, uh, uh, like, your first aid kit and stuff. And I'm not, I'm not going to lie. You put together a pretty damn, good, uh, pretty damn good first aid kit. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it worked pretty hard on it. And it's, it's tough because you can take up a lot of space with oh, bandages man. and wraps and so on and so forth. So you're trying to get it down to the bare minimum of what you actually need and what, you know, you can live without. Um, you, you know, uh, a, a lot of things can be, ta- you, you know, like, it's most important to cover the actual wound, and then you can wrap it with whatever you have, whatever you need to wrap it with, whatever you can salvage. But, uh, but yeah, it's the, yeah, that's definitely the important part. And, you know, there's that, uh, what is it, like, pack truck house um, principle. I don't know. Which, I'm uh, familiar with um, that. This is pack. You know, like, this is everything reduced down to, like, just an easy yes. carrying, you know. And yes. then you've got, like, then you've got a, a much more advanced setup, like, in your vehicle. Yes. And then you've got a much more advanced setup in your house. And that's a, you know, a kind of a good. Uh, yes. That's a good, good, good point because I have, this is my, this is my get home bag, which has all, which I have con- tried to condense down to as small of a, uh, of a carry as I can. Um, should you have to take off? Should off I have foot? to take off right now? Yep. But then I'm also going to be bringing along my camping gear, right? Which is a much, much more um, comprehensive um, pack. And whatever uh, self-defense uh, devices right. you are able to so legally carry. So obviously and, uh, something we, we didn't cover in this that, you know, is, a, is a such a personal choice. Um, and, uh, and the legality issues change from state to state. Um, but I- if you um, are inclined to carry a firearm, um, obviously that's another thing that, that, that would more than likely you'd want to you'd want to put in, in in your get home bag, um, depending on your situation. And we mentioned uh, we mentioned uh, you know being being uh, uh, progressives uh, generally, uh, and uh, um, but don't let that fool you. Uh, we are well, we're gun toting liberals. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so that's something to, to think about too. Um, though it is really important to keep in mind that you know. Uh, depending on where you're traveling, um, just I have my permit to carry in, in, in Minnesota, but that doesn't um, translate to having my permit to carry anywhere uh, in, in the country, which is really unfortunate. I wish at some point they'd come out with a federal um, 
you know, uh, Carrie and I would jump through whatever hoops needed to be jumped through to to get that. That um, would be convenient. But uh, yeah, uh, I think the likelihood of that is uh, right around Ooh, zero. Yeah, yeah nil. <laughs> right around nil. So anything I'm missing, Kyle? Oh, the one, there's two things on my list that I, I've yet to get. One of them is maps, actual paper maps. We talked about this earlier. We yeah. talked about this earlier. Um, I, uh, like, you, it's tough, you just can't, I just can't go to a gas station right now and buy a map for um, Ohio, <laughs> you know. So my plan is to acquire the maps along the way of each state so that I have a fairly comprehensive map. And eventually, in my travels, hopefully, I will uh, I will collect all of the maps that I need. Um, and then what, there was one other thing I had on my list that I forgot that I was going to put on there. Um, oh yeah, very important. And I just didn't get it yet. I ordered some um, liquid IV, um, oh. which is all that is is an additive that you add to water that has um, electrolytes, potassium, um, carbohydrates, um, and uh, and that just makes the water that you drink absorb into your body a lot quicker um sodium as well um and that's that's really important and there's a lot of mixes out there that you can purchase if you don't get that uh yeah you know, if you don't get your order in by the time you take yeah off. i did see that there are some uh some uh i mean g- even like gatorade, gatorade pouches and stuff like pouches, that yeah. yeah but you want to do it as pouches you don't want to carry around gatorade no, in your no. in your backpack the idea is you're trying to uh shrink it down to the to the minimum also one thing that you may have noticed that i didn't carry and in a lot of uh a lot of these lists they do have like carrying water with you and i just doesn't seem like a good use of weight because water's heavy right and the likelihood if something were to happen there's going to be water accessible at least at first right yeah even if it's the water in the back of a toilet in a in a restroom it's still potable water yeah and i mean at the you know and i have at the onset of an emergency you know you'll have a lot of water in the car Yep, that's when um, you so get you'll it. be carrying, you know, like if you if the car, you know, if the car is disabled for some reason, you know, then you'll be carrying water with you. Um, but you know, for the purposes of this exercise, we didn't really need to show you water. You know, water is important. Right, but I'm also not carrying two gallons of water in my pack, yeah. and I'm not using a camel pack, and I'm not doing any of those things, um, just because it just to me it just didn't make sense weight wise. So. So I think that's about it. All right. Um, yeah. Uh, so I know this is pretty unpolished. This is our first outing. Uh, if you, uh, you know, if you like what we do, if you want to support the show, give us a like, give us yeah. a share, uh, subscribe, ideally subscribe, um, you know, tell your friends. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. And uh, in the comments or uh, hit us up on our uh, Facebook page, uh, 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 Spitballing Podcast, Um we uh, we're always open to suggestions. If you want to learn anything else, or you know, you want us to uh, to go down any other directions, we're yeah. Happy if you to do have it. a suggestion, if you have something that you know a lot about that you'd like us to sh- er, like us to share, like us to cover, by all means, you know, we're uh, we're kind of uh, you know we're neophytes in this in, in this world as well. Um, so uh, yeah, we're all in this together. Awesome. Well, thank you guys very much for tuning in, and we will see you guys next time on Progressive Preppers.